Pope Francis ends his two-day trip to the French city of Marseille with a call to European leaders to open their ports and welcome migrants. Ukraine continues to target the Crimean city of Sebastopol with missile strikes a day after attacking the Russian Black Sea Fleet headquarters. The first Red Cross humanitarian aid convoy arrives in the Nagorno-Karabakh region while Moscow continues to mediate between Yerevan and Baku. Thousands gathered in the French city of Marseille's Velodrome Stadium on Saturday to hear Pope Francis's mass before his return to the Vatican. Local authorities counted more than 50,000 people in the building, while 100,000 others lined the streets to witness the heavily guarded Pope Mobile's tour. In the presence of the French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife, the pontiff called on European governments to open their ports and do more to help people fleeing hardship and poverty. The nostre città metropolitane e tanti paesi europei come la Francia, in cui convivono culture e religioni diverse, sono in questo senso una grande sfida contro l'esasperazione dell'individualismo, contro gli egoismi e le chiusure che producono solitudine e differenza. Before leaving, the Pope condemned the widespread acceptance of abortion and euthanasia in many European countries, saying human life was being discarded through the rejection of immigrants, unborn children and the elderly. Russian officials announced that Ukraine launched another missile on the port city of Sebastopol in occupied Crimea on Saturday morning. This comes a day after Kyiv launched 12 attacks on the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet, which an Ukrainian official said killed nine people and injured 16. However, his claim could not be verified as Russian officials only reported one serviceman as missing. According to the regional governor, Sebastopol was put on an air raid alert for an hour. Meanwhile, according to international observers, the Ukrainian summer counteroffensive continued to make slow gains in the east and south of the country. Also in the southeast of Ukraine on Saturday, Kyiv's military officials said Russia launched 15 Iranian-made Shahed drones in the Zaporizhia region as well as the Dnipropetrovsk province further north. Local authorities in Kherson reported at least one death and three injuries over the past day due to Russian shelling. The European Commission's executive vice president for the economy has begun a four-day visit to China. Speaking at the Bund summit in Shanghai, Valdis Dombrovskis called for a more balanced trade relationship with the world's second largest economy. Citing the EU's trade deficit of almost 400 billion euro per year with China as an example of inequality. Uh, our long-term interest is to embrace reforms and stay open to international cooperation. Here we see China as an important partner, one with whom the EU wishes to work towards a more balanced trade and investment relationship. Dombrovsky says the European Union's recent strategy maximizes the benefits of openness while de-risking, insisting that the EU had no intention of decoupling from China and also called on Beijing to broaden access for foreign businesses. The executive vice president will next travel to Beijing, where he is expected to discuss the EU inquiry into Chinese electric cars. The ceasefire in the Nagorno-Karabakh region remains fragile as both Azerbaijan forces and Armenian separatists accused each other of violating the truce on Saturday, which saw one Russian peacekeeper killed. Despite this, the first Red Cross convoy carrying over 70 tons of humanitarian aid was able to enter the enclave through the Lachin Corridor. At the UN General Assembly in New York, Baku said it was willing to negotiate while Yerevan demanded guarantees for the safety of the Armenians living in the region and Russia acted as the mediator between the parties. Thousands of ethnic Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh have been displaced since Tuesday when Azerbaijan launched a major military operation against alleged Armenian positions in the area in what it called an anti-terrorist operation.